Hi everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com. Today I'm tying a completely different kind of fly for you today. I'm tying an articulated fly. Uh, I had a request from uh, one of the customers at our shop on how I tie my um, Helgramite pattern, the Helgramite pattern that I fish for smallmouth and stuff in the summertime. So I'm going to show you how I tie this in the video. It's not as difficult as it may look. Uh, not as intimidating as it may look and uh, I'm going to get started on it here the thing we use to tie this is from fish skulls it's articulated fish spines if you ever seen Blaine Chockett's game changer minnow uh, the big long articulated minnow that you can tie it's the same stuff I use I'll just use this instead to tie my Helgramite pattern um, for the hook I tie the hook as a trailer hook on this I have tied the head, used the, the, the head of the fly as a hook too, and uh, this one I'm just going to use the game changer, do it the game changer style. Um, I don't, I catch them on the hook, but most of the time I catch them on the stinger hook on the back here. So what you're going to do is you're going to, put, put this back in view here, there's these little, little uh, pieces here you can see, and let me get a bigger one to show you. Here's the bigger version of the same thing. Okay. And we're going to just continually build up with bigger pieces of these. We're going to start out with the small one, the smallest one you can see. What we're going to do is just going to put that through the eye of our hook. Okay. This is going to be the trailer hook on our fly. And we're going to put this in our vise. This is probably the hardest piece to tie right here. And uh, just put it in a vise like that. I'm going to use black thread. And I'm going to tie this tight. And as you can see, while I'm tying that, it's pulling that the two pieces together there. I'm going to flip this over in the vise. Get that hook out of the way. There we go. It'll make it a little easier to tie. Okay, wrap that back there as far as I can. Okay, now the next thing is polar chenille. Um, medium size polar chenille, not the long stuff that we use for the goblin, but the medium size. I'm using black for this. Of course, the Helgramite is black. You could use, you could do it in other colors, I'm sure, but I'm trying to be as natural as possible here, so I'm going to go with the black. This has like a purple tint to it. I think it would be cool if they had like an olive tint with the black here, but this purple works fine. Caught lots of fish on it. Just going to tie it down, and then we're going to wrap it forward. Always pull in the fibers back as you make your next wrap, and be very careful doing this. You're going to stick your fingers, guarantee it. Um, just keep wrapping it forward. Put a lot on here get three or four wraps there get as many as you can and then we're just going to tie this piece off Okay. pull our fibers back make a nice head there and we're going to whip finish this off. Okay. Now we whip finish that off. We're going to stick the next section of this on. Okay, this comes in four sections. So we're just going to use the next bigger size. It's easy just to lay it all out on the table. And, uh, do them size by size. You saw how easy I just stuck that through the eye, okay? And this is where you're going to get your articulation from. So you don't want to crowd that eye too much. So we're just going to pop this out, move it back on the vise, and put the new section in. Okay, then we're going to do the same thing all over again. We're going to start our thread on this piece. Gonna 
catch that bottom section don't pull it all tight at once wrap it down together if you pull it too tight to start with you'll break your thread off so just tie it down tighter as you go and it'll all pull together okay now you have your thread tied down there we're gonna come back with the uh, polar chenille tie it down again onto this section wrap it back and then wrap your thread forward and same thing here just wrap this forward pulling the fibers back so you don't trap any extras down trying to make this as buggy as possible careful so you're still being careful pulling backwards that big hooks back there so make sure you don't catch it with your thumb or your finger you're not gonna like it trust me I know wrap this up here as close to that eye as you can get and make a couple extra wraps here I just want this pretty full and thick here at the the junction point so there's not a real big break in between the during the junction point there kinda want the, the fly to flow together put about three or four wraps there to tie it down tight and we'll trim this off okay, and then we're just gonna pull those fibers back and make a nice clean head again Do another whip finish. Alright, now we're going to get back to our pow and get the next bigger size here in our articulated pieces. Okay, we're just going to pop it on same way again. And then put it in the vise. Okay, this will be the last section of the polar chenille. Okay, you saw how I made a wrap or two there and just continually tied it down tighter and tighter okay and we're gonna come back with our polar chenille again and make another section another body section uh, I fished this I've caught rock bass smallmouth you know sunfish anything in the river while I was fishing it worked real well for me there uh, early summertime is when it, when I really fished it the most I, I do mostly trout fishing and then uh, when the water starts to warm up I'll switch over into smallmouth and that's when I that's when I switch to using it I really believe I could catch some trout on this you know if I was in the right stream there's some streams around here that have the helgramites mostly it's my smallmouth streams that have the helgramites the smaller ones I fish don't usually have those but I know one or two that does and I'm sure I could pick some nice sized trout up on this you know big fly big fish kind of deal but I'll tell you what it, the small fish will hit it too um, you know early in the spring there there was a lot of I was catching a lot of smaller smallmouth on this and uh, mainly using it nymph style and uh, just making sure I got it down on the bottom and I was swinging it too swinging it works just fine too but we're just gonna keep wrapping this forward here we get it up to the end we're gonna tie it off again OK, 
Okay, and we're going to cut our tag in. Now we have the finished tail section of this fly. This is a pretty long fly here. When it's all done, said and done, it's about a oh, about a three inch fly. Okay. Now it's time for the head section of the fly. And this is probably the hardest part of the fly, I'd say. Um, you're going to do the same thing. There's now we're on to the last piece. There's four sections of this, four sizes. We're on to the last one, the longest one. We're going to do the same thing, pop it in there. Pop it in the vise. Get our thread started. Okay. All right. Now this one's the one where we're gonna have to put a little bit of time into this one. Okay. I'm gonna start out. I'm gonna put a little bit more of the polar chenille on it. I'm just gonna tie it on for now. I'll come back to it here in a second. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do. So I want to tie a set of dumbbell eyes on this and I'm actually I want this right now the way I have it the way I have it my hook is riding down when I pull when I pull this back the hook is riding down so I'm going to tie the dumbbell eyes on top right now and I want to bring them back a little bit like like a dumbbell eyes width like let me see if I can show you. If you set the dumbbell eyes there, the hook eye, you see that's a, a hook eye. I want to tie it in back here, okay? I want to have room for the claws and the pinchers, I mean, on this fly in front of it. So we're going to tie this back a, a little bit further than you might on some other flies. But there's a reason. Okay, we're going to figure eight it and get it on there like I do in my other videos. Pine squirrel, leech, goblin, you know, just figure eight it, tie it down, put lots of wraps on it. Lots of tight wraps. Okay, now I'm going to take, I'm going to put a little bit of UV fly finish. I'm going to use the flow stuff. Just going to put a little dab of it on top and on bottom of it. And this stuff here is real thin. It's kind of like a nail polish kind of consistency, even maybe a little bit thinner. But it's a, just a nice glue that tack, er, hardens up and will hold it in place. Hit it with my light, which really needs a new battery. Okay looking good there okay now when you have when you put dumbbells on a fly the side the dumbbells are on are always going to ride on the bottom so this fly is technically upside down right now because I tied the top the dumbbell eyes on the top when this fly is going to be in the water it's actually going to travel this way with the dumbbell eyes down okay which whenever I tied this you can see here the direction of my hook this is the way if I pulled this straight back and got it in the, in the camera shot this is the way my hook would be riding behind this fly okay it goes straight back like that so I want my hook to be riding up in the air so it's less likely to get caught on the bottom and the next thing I'm gonna do those dumbbell eyes will add some weight to it but I want to add a little bit more than that because I'm going to put a little bit of craft foam on here in a second to to build the head up and uh, I want to combat that craft foam so I'm just going to take a piece of lead start back here and just 
wrap a piece of lead on and weight this a little bit heavier um, a lot of times they use the flat lead you can use flat lead whichever one you whichever one you want but just get a nice body of lead on here to add some extra weight to this fly to help it get it down faster too because a lot of times your smallmouth rivers tend to be a little bit deeper than your you know your trout streams that you're fishing so you want to be able to get down as fast as you can get in the strike zone the longer you're in the strike zone the more chance of fish you have, chance of catching a fish you have so we're going to tie that lead down okay just get that all covered up there now the next thing I want to do is I want to come back here and I'm going to this piece we tied down a second ago I'm going to put about three wraps on this reason I'm doing it simply is just to cover up this junction right here you can you can see back in here in the fly where you can't see the connection between the two of them because it's all hidden if I don't do this there'll be a definite gap between here and there so this is just to continue that body just a little bit further and I'm only going to put like I said like three wraps tops I'm going to keep them close to the back too because I want to leave as much room as I can for the head part of this okay now that I got my three wraps down we're going to tie this off and you can see how that that hid the the junction of the articulated pieces here okay next part I'm going to take a black piece of craft foam like you get at Walmart or whatever and you see the shape I cut in this this is my pinchers at the head and then this is going to be the the casing on his back there that hard part on his back that you know if you ever caught these things you always pinch that right there to hold them so you don't get pinched by the pinchers um, and then I'm going to cut a little thin piece here that that's going to get tied down with so we're going to tie this piece down next and I'm going to set this on the top of the fly now remember your dumbbell eyes are going to be down on the bottom so I'm going to set this on the top and I'm gonna put it back towards the back we're just going to tie this down tie it loose first and then wrap it tight to suck that foam down that's just um, craft foam we sell it at the store at the shop in black you can also get it at Walmart or Hobby Lobby or any of the craft stores like that just the thin um, craft foam okay now you see when this is gonna come up over top then it's gonna, here in a second you're gonna have your pincher sticking out over the end and stuff okay we're gonna tie the cactus chenille in here first I should have tied that in before those legs because which we're going which we do now but um, it'll make the it would have been very difficult to put the, that on after the legs now we're gonna go back again put the X pattern on and put these legs back on just back here where I want it like I said just making an X pattern doing it loosely putting them where I want them and then we will put the one on top and I'll actually do an X over top of that one so I can get the legs pulled straight through it here okay then once I get that one tied down I'm just gonna pull this back and get my thread up here in front of the eyes okay now time to put the cactus chenille on and to put the cactus chenille on we're gonna pull our legs forward so we can make a couple wraps behind it and I got my cactus chenille tangled in my hook there okay 
get these out of the way here. We're going to make a wrap or two behind the legs. Okay, now the first, the back set of legs, I'm going to pull them back and I'm going to wrap in between them in the middle. Alright, then we're going to come in and we're going to wrap between the middle and the front set of legs. Okay, now then we're going to pull our front legs back. We're going to wrap in front of them, behind, right behind the dumbbell eye. Then I'm going to take, and I'm going to put a couple wraps right in front of the dumbbell eye. Okay, then we're going to tie this off. Okay, now we cut that off there. Now it's time to put the shell on the back of our body here. We're just going to pull this over. And what I'm going to do, is you see where my eyes are, I'm going to bring my thread back here behind my eyes now. Make a wrap or two behind the eyes to get it back there where I want. And we're going to pull this over. And you can see how I have the groove in between in between the body and the pinchers there. We're going to put that right behind the eyes. And that's where we're going to tie that down. We're going to make a wrap or two there. Okay. And then we're going to come in front of the eyes. And we're going to wrap our pinchers down, which we'll pinch pull the pinchers up in the air a little bit and give them a little bit of action there. Then we're just going to straighten our legs back out here and we're going to come up here and we're going to tie our, hook, tie our string off. Let's do a whip finish on the head. Next one on there. Okay. Now, you can see my legs are really long. I'm just going to trim them down to about a quarter, about a quarter of an inch. Uh, they don't have real long legs. see there how I trimmed those down short and you can see the bot underneath there this is my Helgramite pattern like I said earlier this is my go-to fly for fishing summertime smallmouth um, on the river or I fish mainly the Racetown branch of the Juniata uh, this is my go-to not a lot of material, not a lot of different kinds of material you need to tie this for such a big fly. Um, but it is a little bit on the difficult side, a little bit more difficult than I'm normally used to tying in the videos for you guys. But it works real well. And uh, the materials you need to tie it, you can find at our website, wholesingersflyshop.com. So if you need anything, look us up for this fly or any of the other flies on my video. You can find them there. And if you're ever interested in going on one of the smallmouth trips, I book uh, guiding trips from wholesingersguideservice.com when I'm not trout fishing. You know, sometimes I'll do some smallmouth trips in the summer. So if you're interested in doing some of that, give me a call, wholesingersguideservice.com. Thanks again for watching. I'm Sean Holsinger.